Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me on Art on the Creek. We're in my home studio in Parker, Colorado, and in one of my most recent videos, we did watercolor on a wood panel. And we've got, I've got three more wood panels to do, but I'm not gonna work on those today. What I wanna talk about though, is the leftover paint that I have on my palette. I know this happens to every single watercolorist out there, but if you're a newbie, I kind of want to show you how to get the most out of your leftover paint so you don't have to waste it. Are you ready? Let's go create. I am freezing today. I don't know what the temperature is, but my hands have been cold all day and they just will not warm up. Um, so I want to think about summer. I haven't even had time to go and get my, uh, my plants out. I'm just, I, we have deer, so I don't plant a lot, but I do put some impatience out. This is a very old book. Um, Sunset Magazine is very, uh, very popular for their botanicals, the recommendations, and they have beautiful pictures in here. And I thought, oh, that's a good idea. Sometimes when I don't know what to paint, I like to look through here to see what kind of florals I can paint. And you know what? I just opened to this one, the California poppies. They're so pretty with their oranges and I like the different textures in them. So I'm gonna kind of use that as a reference. Uh, I will put up a link to a photo of California poppies that is royalty free, but I'll use that one as my idea point. Uh, let's see here. I just wanna get the basic shape of a poppy down. So I'm gonna try and draw this. Yeah, I'm sorry, I was thinking if I should use a watercolor pencil. I'm still going to use just a regular pencil, but let's do, I hope you can see my lines here because I'm gonna go a little bit darker. This is where the petal is folded over the top and we've got the center here and you might wanna do a little bit of guidelines to kind of show where your poppy is going to be. Now this one, is kind of opening up like so. So here's the center here, and then we've got the, the rim of the poppy here. So the next one that comes around, the next petal, this one is kind of in the front, and this one comes up from behind a little bit like so. And then this one is going to spill out, the edge is going to spill out this way. So this one is curving out, this one's curving out also, this one's bending in. And then it's got, this one's kind of standing up like that. And let's put one more on here just for posterity's sake. make it kind of like that and just have it be kind of straight. Make this edge a little more ruffly. I like that line better. The paper that I'm using today is 100% cotton cold press and it looks like these have little stems like this and then the leaves are kind of interesting they're kind of like dandelion leaves this is the problem with old eyes and a photo that's <laughs> not digital i cannot zoom in I'm just kind of going to pretend that that's what it looks like because this is something that's just for an illustration purpose for me and some fun for you, I hope. Oh, let's see here. We've got some that are past their prime and they kind of have a little center part coming up and then they sit in a disc. So we'll have that one go this way and then we'll put a few others in. Let's see, we've got one pointing up. Let's have one pointing kind of to the back. I think I'll put that in front here. And this one is going to be kind of pointing back like that. Oh, 
All right, we'll fill in some leaves here and there. Let's see, we can do another poppy down here, make this one kind of more open. And I guess they do have a little bit of something going on in the center. It's like this, and then there's some little fronds like that, it looks like. Almost looks like a little fire in there. Okie doke. Kind of like that. This one can be behind that one. We'll put a few little few little other things in there, but for now that's all I'm going to do. Let me just brush off the remaining crumbs. I think though, let's tape the edges on this one. That'd be kind of fun. Let's see, we'll use that word weak as our guide. There we go. I'll tape it off. Our heater just came on. I'm really tired of running the heater. Let's start off with, let's do something else. Let's, I'm gonna take this uh, Princeton Neptune one and a half inch Mottler brush and I'll get it good and wet. And we're just gonna wet the entire surface of this. So wherever you are, I hope that you are really enjoying spring. We're just getting such a late start to it here in Colorado that, uh, yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. My husband works from home and uh, his office is headquartered in Washington State. And he recently had to have a meeting with some of the folks from the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest, I should say. And we thoroughly blamed them for this weather, that we feel that they brought it in and they can just take it right back home. <laughs> I'm not a fan of uh, cold weather at all. I think that's all I'm gonna need the Mottler brush for. Uh, I'm gonna go in now to some of this. Now this was a CMY palette. Uh, this was Cerulean, Magenta, and Yellow. So let's go over here to this green area and it's just a mix of the yellow and blue. i get a little more yellow here. And whenever you wanna to tone that down and bring it uh, away from how rich it is, you can just add a touch of purple and then you can get a really, or, or magenta, and get a really deep, uh, kind of a, uh, a mellow green, a real deep green. And that is kind of what these poppies have. We're going to use different greens in this, so I do want to put some of the light greens in. And I'm just, I am going around these poppies, but I want to make sure to leave some space because I do want to put in some orange. And I also want to get some of the different shades of green, and I want to go from uh, the blues to the very lights. And I also want to include some of these really sultry greens, these real deep greens here. That's almost brown. There we go. Now, whenever you're working on wet paper in a dry climate, you're going to want to go just a little bit quickly. Okay, now we need to mix an orange. So I'm going to take the magenta and I'm going to clean up that yellow. Well, now I've got magenta all over it. And we'll mix that in. You can see you get a really nice orange with that. Let's get some more yellow in that situation. And now we can fill in around these poppies. Now I do want these colors to kind of mix. So I'm just really being free with my strokes. Some more yellow. This was a lemon yellow that I had on here. I'm 
kind of those will kind of end up being in the background. And now I've just got a wet brush and I'm just tapping it off. It is a little bit of yellow on there. And I just want to add a little bit of water to this situation back here just to kind of loosen it up and add some forced cauliflower blooms. Now with just a little bit more of this magenta, I'm going to go in over here with this yellow and try and get a really deep, rich orange. And with the very tip of my brush, I can pull that into these poppies here and just kind of fill in the spots where we still need some pigment. Not being real detailed yet and already down here, I don't know if you can tell, but my my paper is drying already. And that is just fine. Try and get some more poppies that would be kind of, you know, in the background. Okay, now let's add a little bit more magenta to this orange we've got going over here. Right, really deep now. And just trying to get the very deepest shades of this in here. go ahead and drop in some of that mix back here even leaving some of the magenta now at this point you can either hold on I'm gonna add just a little bit more green it's starting to kind of just be a little bit too light back here and I want it just a touch darker in some of these areas. Now down here is where it's kind of starting to dry so we'll just stop about there and then we can add some down here. Just kind of maybe suggest the stems for these poppies that would be back here. And remember, we added those forced blooms, too, so that would be really nice. Blooms in blooms. And I kind of like that area a little bit lighter right there, so I'm just going to leave most of that. All right, now let's go ahead and get our heat tool. I'm going to go ahead and dry this with the heat tool. You can let it dry on its own. In fact, this would be a good time for you to add some salt or some other techniques. If you do add salt to absorb that pigment and leave kind of a starburst design behind, you're going to want to let that dry on its own. I want to dry the back of this too, just to make sure I'm getting it really dry. All right, now I'm going to need to go in and clear out some space around my yellow. I really did put out a little more paint than I needed but it's not a problem because you can always reuse it and that's I'm gonna be using this for a while I think here we go here's the brush I was using the brush I am using by the way for this is a number eight silver black velvet I love using a number eight because it just really gives me a lot of freedom of movement and now I'm gonna fill this in with the lemon yellow and I'll go on top just a little bit because that the rich orange that's under there will show through and it will really be a nice uh, layered look to that to the paint that's one great thing about watercolor use that to your advantage when you whenever you can um, to take advantage of the transparent nature of watercolor 
Now this lighter color over a darker color is not going to make a, a huge impact, but it will be subtle and it will be noticeable. I'm gonna leave those white spaces there. And back to our heat tool. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. <laughs> my hands are so cold. I've got on winter socks. I can't believe this. I mean, literally, it's usually 80 degrees, high 70s this time of year. And we just sure didn't get that this year. We had an enormous amount of rain last week. I think we got five inches of rain. That does not happen. It just rained and rained and it didn't stop. It rained all day. It rained all night. And um, I thought it was never going to stop. Personally, I find that depressing. I know a lot of people like the rain, but for me, it is not my favorite. But it's over now. All right, so here we are. Let me go to a smaller brush. Now I'm going to go to a number four. Same thing, I'm going to use a silver black velvet. This is a number four round brush. And for those of you that don't know, a round brush is one that's shaped like a, a teardrop. You have this fat belly for holding paint and then it comes to a point. So you have a lot of versatility with a round brush. Um, these are a professional's brush. You don't have to start with these if you don't want to. You just get yourself a good nylon brush to start with. The ones that I recommend are this little set here of Princeton Snap brushes. They are round and you do get a flat. So you're starting with a number six, a number four, and a three quarter inch stroke brush. So I call them flat, but a stroke. It just means you can do big background areas with it. These are wonderful brushes to start with. But today I'm going to use my silver black velvet. So don't feel like you have to invest in anything that I'm using here. Uh, you can use your son or daughter's uh, student watercolors, or you can take yourself to the grocery store and go down the student school supply aisle and get yourself a, a set of paints that are in the school supplies and just use those. All right, now these little things in the middle are kind of, kind of like fronds. I'm just making them very simple and same with this guy here. It's kind of got some of these little spike things all around him. Let me zoom in just a little bit so that you can see this more clearly. Got to stand up so I can reach my camera. There we go. I think you can still see the palette and everything. So this paint here is probably the consistent of uh, half and half, consistency rather, of half and half. And I'm just suggesting these little spikes that are on this part of the flower here. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of a shading right there. And the same with, let's see now, we wanted to have this. come up this way. And then let's make a little line here where we can see where the, the leaf ends. Now normally I would not have made my pencil lines this dark, but I did want you all to see where these were going and what the intention was here. Now I am adding the little stripe details that uh, or like the veins, I guess. And then we'll add some shadow down here. going to get a little bit of blue over here and mix some of this. I want to get a very dark moody purple so that I can get some shadows going in here. So I'm putting the shadow up under here where the petal would come up my goodness, and, uh, and come back down. And then I've got my brush, it's just wet. 
So I'm just going to pull that pigment down a little bit, providing some uh, water path for it, I guess, would be the way to phrase that. We'll drop a little bit more pigment in. Tip this up a bit so I can see it better. some more of this moody purple here. We need yellow and blue. There's a little bit of green and then we'll add a touch of this purple. There we go. That's it. It's a very browny purple that I'm looking for. And that's going to help me to put shadows inside the petal as well as kind of determine where it's going. I'm going to put a little bit around the ridge there and then this part here. I think I'll make that one curve in. I don't really know what I had planned for that, but this is what's happening now. I like those darker lines better. And with this one, I'm just taking a wet brush, pulling that down, and then let's just add some pigment to that. Same as under here. Now, when you're having fun with watercolor like this, it's important to remember not to overwork something. So I'm going to let that go because right here I need to let that dry before I move on. I'll lift out a little bit of highlight here, and the way that we do that is we get the brush wet, dab it off, and then run it across the edge there. So what I want to do now with this highlighted portion is I'm going to drop in a little bit of yellow pigment. There we go. All right, and then we'll go back to this moody brown. And I'll add some of that here from this leaf. Just being very sketchy with this whole process, not really making anything too botanically correct at all. I'm just really playing, to be honest. I'm just having fun. There we go. Now there's another. This is curled up towards us again, so I want to pull that down. I am very aware that when I when I talk as I'm working, I rarely finish a sentence, so I'm just going to apologize right now. Get some of that moody brown again. We'll blue it up just a little bit more. There it is, that moody purple. Get a little more magenta on that. Oh, that's a nice shade. We just need a little more yellow. There it is. When you're mixing your own pigments, you have so much freedom. I really think it, it allows you to be a much better watercolorist if you are mixing your own colors. And in fact, when you're brand new, I think it's really a very good idea to try and uh, stick with mixing your own pigments. But the convenience colors are there and you know what? They're convenient. They're named that for a reason. And I have no, no issues against using them. I just, uh, I really like to mix my own paints. Okay. There's that guy, and I'll come back and put some more veins in there. And you can see this one is really drying nicely. So now I'm going to go back to this moody purple that we made. A little more blue in there. And I will add these few veins in, as well as, I think in this one I'm going to use the magenta some of these little, little lines that would be on top. A little more
more shadow in there. Whenever you add a shadow, that's going to separate the area. So by adding a shadow in there and in here, we can separate these leaves. I don't know why I keep calling these leaves. They're petals. I might call them leaves again. I did not want to put that there. So we'll just blot that up with a paper towel. And then we'll go from there. Now this one has a nice shadow. It looks as though that leaf is kind of curving back. So I'll take advantage of that. And this one will be curving forward. All right, now let's just get a little bit of this magenta and some of the yellow. I want to just get that orange back again. And we'll pull that down right there. And I'll go over this just very lightly. I don't want to disturb what's already underneath there, but I do want to add some, uh, some detail to that. And then we'll go back in here. And I'm going to go into this really dark one that I had mixed before. It's almost a black. There it is and we'll fill this in here. Just a little bit of shadow. Okay, and now I think I'll, I'll go into that blue and kind of blue up this purple just a little. It's a little too blue. I need to keep it more toward the red. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. And now I want just a touch of yellow there, that's really nice. This is why you want a white palette because when you're mixing your paint, you can see through the paint to the palette to see what color it is that you're, uh, that you're actually working with. And this looks like it's kind of the, the ring left over that uh, connects the, the, petal, the petals to the, to the stem. So we're gonna just do that. And we'll put a little more darker on this side because our light source is kind of coming this way, I think. This isn't going to be real real specific as far as uh, light and shadow. Uh, but I do want to go ahead and go in there now with this green. And I want to mix it with a little bit of this blue. That's a nice dark shadowy green. That's what I want for this back here. And I'm going to, put, to intentionally mix it with that orange. And now when you're coming through something to make a stem, you just hold it above the paper and continue down. And then you'll see where that line goes. And I did want to have that in front of this flower down here. So there we go. Now I'll go ahead and add in some other stems. There's that nice spring green. And to that spring green, I'm just going to add a little dab of magenta and see how that immediately brings that more toward a ruddy green. And that is the way that our uh, poppy stems look is that ruddy green. And now I'm going to add just a bit of darkness to it with that blue. There we are. So let's see, we'll go into that ruddy green. I want to make it just a little bit thicker. There we go really darken that up and I can go over this one again and I'm going to kind of keep trying to turn this around I'm just darkening this green and now we'll catch this stem little bit more purple added to that and we can add these leaves in this one can have a, a leaf coming up 
And I think I'll put another one in about here. And I think I'll make one kind of just in the background here. So I'm going to work on that background one first. So I want it kind of dark, but I need it to be a little thicker paint. There we go. So this is the center of the leaf. And now what I'm going to do is just push my brush down and pick it up and create little leaves coming out of the side of this center leaf stem. They don't have to be perfect. We're just having fun adding leaves. And now I'll go in the little darker section here and I'm just dropping in some pigment to the center of each of those leaves and down the spine. So that will fill that in. And now I think I'll go in with some of this uh, blue or green. And let's do this one here. And then we'll go into that really dark blue and drop pigment in that way. There we go. That's what I want, kind of a, a yellow ochre green. And all of these are just kind of playing with one another. So we can definitely have things overlap. You can have wet paint over wet paint and have things blend together. It's all up to you. Just don't forget to go in and drop in a different shade of green or blue on top of your wet paint so that it can blend in and create some dimension in those leaves. That would be your wet on wet. As you can see, that's, that's happening over here. And now we've got one more set of leaves to do. Looks like I've used up all the yellow, which is fabulous. So let me go ahead and uh, come in here to where the green is a little more bluish and let's just get these guys in here and again because of the transparent nature that we are going through we don't need to worry about which which one is behind which this is just kind of a fantastical pattern if you will making this very very sheer and now I'm going in with some blue. And dropping that in. And I do like the way that turned out. Now I think what I'll do is I'll go into this really dark, dark blue over here that I've mixed a little bit with that magenta. And I'm just going to add to this uh, poppy stem here. There. Now since this stem is going over right where I want to paint next, I'm going to hit this with the heat tool. And as this dries, you can see the layers that we've got in our leaves. And I can go back to my number four. And let's see, we'll just go into this orange because there's a little bit of it left. trying to do this without adding any more pigment to my palette. So this one is going to be a little bit different than the others. 
as I'm painting this final poppy here in our uh, three poppy painting, <laughs> um, I just wanted to call your attention to the angle that my brush strokes are going. When you are painting anything that is uh, a cup shape, always have in mind which angle that cup is on its axis. If you were to put a dowel down the center of that cup, where would it be pointing? And then how would that, how would those edges of the cup uh, be facing? And that's the way you want to curve your lines. So if you can just imagine a teacup as your, uh, as your blossom, and then that dowel that would go through it, that's the stem. And however you rotate that around to look at it, you can definitely uh, use those curvatures of your lines to your advantage. And that really helps you establish form in your painting. It's through form and shadow that we explain what we are seeing. That's what we literally paint a picture with, how we tell our story as artists. And by using varying forms, varying shadows, we can change that story so that it best suits what we're trying to communicate and how we want the viewer to see our vision of the world. And finally, for those veins that would be on here coming over the back, very tiny. There's the little shadows here. There. One more heat tool. And this time, I'm going to scoot this over, we can go ahead and remove the tape. And whenever I take tape off, I like to warm it up with the heat tool because even if it's low tack tape like this, it can still ruin your paper. But if you heat that adhesive up, it will come off very easily. Just be really, really careful and don't burn your fingers. These things can get pretty hot. Ooh, sticking everything here. All right, now for the fun part. I can unstick my tape from everything. My goodness. And I'm going to take this plastic eraser. I just like to keep it in the cardboard because it keeps it a little bit cleaner. And I'm going to erase the edges where I had some pencil lines. Now, if you are trying to erase over your watercolor, it won't hurt your watercolor, but um, you really can't re erase pencil lines once you have watercolored over them. So be aware of that. I'll take my brush, and if you don't have to have this particular brush, you can just use a dry paint brush. This way you just don't get, uh, you won't get oils from your hands onto your art. So here we go. Here's our first painting, cleaning up our palette. We're going to call this one California Poppies. And let's see. Now your painting may not look like mine, but I want to point out some of the things that I mentioned in the beginning so that you can see how they look in the final. You can see how the leaves are all layered and those transparencies uh, within the watercolor properties really work well to establish a depth of field there. And that was just really easy to just layer them right on top of one another. This one here has a really interesting shape with that cup kind of pointing toward us and the, with the light coming in on the top from behind us there, it creates those deeper shadows under the hoods of those petals that are bent over. This one here came out just subtly beautiful and I really like the yellow in that one. Look at the cauliflower blooms. Look what we were able to achieve up there. That one just looks like a little bloom in and of itself. And here where the paper had dried and I had to go in there and leave that white space, I like that as well because it kind of suggests leaves. Here where we dropped in the magenta, back in here where there's another poppy. I think everything just really worked to our advantage. I like all the different greens. We just have a lot of different depth of field. So this is a good thing for you to think about when you're making your own poppy painting. I will definitely put a link to the picture down below in the description. Just look for the reference photo. And when you do create yours, try and put an odd number of poppies in there. You can either do three or five or seven. Anything that is an odd number just tends to be a little bit more pleasing to the eye when you're working on composition. 
I just want to thank you all so much for hanging out with me for this extended length of time. We're going on 40 minutes here and I know that you value your time and so do I. If this is something you'd like to see more of though, these full length tutorials, please let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to accommodate that. I'd like to keep them around 30 to 40 minutes. Um, I think anything longer than that is uh, it's just a little difficult for a lot of people. So um, if you prefer the shorter videos, let me know that too. Just whatever you prefer, I'm happy to try and make the channel fun for you as it is fun for me. Everyone have a great week. I appreciate you all so much. Bye now.